Welcome to Panky Nursing Minutes. My name is Nurse Kathy. And today we are going to talk about appendectomies. Appendectomies. These are acute procedures, surgeries that we do with patients who come in with right lower quadrant abdominal pain. And this little guy right here, <clears throat> this is your appendix. And they call it the veriform appendix. And veriform, um, if you look up the definition of that, means worm-like. And doesn't that look just like a little worm there? So this is the little part of our large intestine that the surgeon removes because it has become inflamed. What happens with the veriform appendix is that um, <laughs> if I was talking in terms of my, my kiddos, my, my five-year-old and eight-year-old, little turd bombs get stuck down there. Hard fecolith um, gets stuck in this little pouch here. And then eventually uh, the lumen becomes closed off so that it can't get out. And then bacteria builds up and builds up and then it invades the wall of the appendix itself causing inflammation. And, um, and then that inflammatory process then turns into increased pressure, which then turns into pain. And then that's when your patients will present to the ER with usually right lower quadrant pain because that's where your appendix is located. Hopefully we get to them before their appendix ruptures. And the signs and symptoms of your patient um, will be that they're gonna have, again, signs of infection, so a fever. Um, they're gonna have elevated temperature. They're not gonna be feeling good. They're going to have pain in that light, right lower quadrant called McBurney's point. Um, and they may have their legs flexed up because they are in so much pain. Oh boy, we're having technical difficulties. <laughs> um, if you do a CBC on them, they're probably gonna have an eleva elevated white blood cell count. And then if you do a CAT scan, you're going to show some inflammatory processes on that appendix. And that's when the surgeon will come in and consult with the patient and discuss their options for management. And those options usually are, they can have a laparoscopic appendectomy or they can do antibiotic management. Laparoscopic surgery. So this is when the surgeon places three trocars into the abdomen. Uh, one is a camera where they will visualize, the other one is a pair of scissors and then forceps and claws. Laparoscopically, um, this is the preferred method. There is a faster recovery rate. Um, if there is no rupture of the appendix, the patients are discharged same day. Um, you can do a laparoscopic surgery for a ruptured appendix. And I have to say that that is the norm. Uh, it's very, very, very rare that we see an open appendectomy. Now there is less incidence of adhesions and, and also intra-abdominal abscesses. If they did have a rupture, then the patient will have a drain because they will do a lavage of the abdomen and then um, they will place a drain and keep an eye on that to make sure that intra-abdominal abscess does not form. So this is what your patient's abdomen is gonna look like post-op. Some changes with surgery, uh, we're always advancing, and this is kind of an old picture. Uh, usually there aren't surface sutures anymore. Nowadays they close everybody with liquid skin, dermabond, liquid band. So, so you won't be seeing those little sutures, but they will have those three trocar sites on the left side because they come in on the left to access the appendix on the right. So open surgery, this is still done um, if there are complications and they do need to go ahead and open up. So in that case, you will have, the patient will have an incision in that right lower quadrant. There's a longer recovery post-op. They will have a drain. They're gonna have antibiotic coverage. They will get admitted. And then you wanna just watch out for those intra-abdominal abscesses that I was talking about. And then also the risk of a small bowel obstruction becomes um, a concern as well. So phase one recovery assessment, you're gonna be watching for retroperitoneal bleeding. So you're gonna be immediately looking at the abdomen, you're gonna be palpating it, making sure that it's soft, it's not firm, it's not rigid, they're not having flank pain or severe abdominal pain. And then you're also gonna be watching that JP drain if they do have a drain, making sure it's not filling up and also making sure that it's not clotting off. 
Uh, pain management is always going to be something that is going to be needed because with laparoscopic surgery, they inflate the abdomen with CO2 air to visualize. Uh, it's called insufflation. And they do deflate at the end of the surgery, but there is some residual air that is left there. And that air rises um, with gravity and it ends up hitting the diaphragm. And there at the bottom of the diaphragm is the phrenic nerve. And so they're going to have some phrenic nerve pain and that pain can even radiate to their shoulders, up to the jaw, back to the scapula from the branches off the phrenic nerve. So know that that is normal. With ambulation, it will actually increase, but it will help the air get absorbed and go away faster. So, so we do want them to get mobilized so that they can get that absorption and it is a normal level of pain and we just have to manage it. Post-op nausea and vomiting PONV management will be a concern with these patients because a lot of them um, were nauseous before surgery and they may be nauseous after surgery. And so just following your hospital's guidelines for management of that. And then again, managing that drain and watching out for intra-abdominal abscesses, especially if it ruptures. That is one of the biggest complications that can occur with having a ruptured appendix. And so you're gonna be watching their temperatures. You're gonna be watching for fever, um, white blood cell count, making sure that you um, stay up to uh, par with their antibiotic coverage, not missing any doses. And then for phase two, so this is when that patient will get admitted into the hospital if they did have a rupture. And again, you're monitoring for infection and intra-abdominal abscess formation. Again, follow your antibiotics, um, you're gonna do your pain management, you're gonna get them ambulating to help reabsorb that CO2. And actually guys, that can take a couple days. It is not instantaneous. I mean, it can actually last like three to five days. So just prepare your patient mentally for that. And then small bowel obstruction is what you're going to be monitoring for. You're going to be watching for this return of bowel sounds. Um, you're going to be finding when was the last time they had a bowel movement, making sure that they're adequately hydrated. So looking at their eyes and nose and their balances, and then, you know, slowly advancing their diet is tolerated. So discharge. So for a normal appendectomy who is not, um, so a normal appendectomy who is just going to go home and they just had an inflamed appendix, it did not rupture. You're going to just be teaching them to monitor at home for signs of infection. So pain, redness, swelling, drainage, fevers, they're going to call their surgeon. Their incision is usually closed with glue. So you want to instruct them not to pull out that glue. It usually will fall off on its own in about seven days. And then just keep it clean and dry. Avoid tub bathing until it's healed. They can usually shower the next day, just keeping the water off of that site and then just patting it dry. And then just no heavy lifting. This is their core, so they want their body to heal. So my rule of thumb is nothing heavier than a gallon of milk. And they can usually return to normal exercise in three to six weeks, which is normal healing time. And then they wanna take their pain medication as prescribed and then also take any stool softeners as prescribed to avoid constipation. And then talking about that constipation, they'll want to stay hydrated and um, have a high fiber diet. And if they don't have a bowel movement in like two to three days, then they should go right to a fleet's enema. So what is the most common emergent surgery in the United States? I think you all can probably guess it by now. It is appendectomies. We do 280,000 of these surgeries a year in the United States. And actually I would bet that this is even higher because my reference is a little dated. So you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna get called in on a holiday or a weeknight to do an emergent appendectomy. These are my references. And again, thank you for turning into PACU Nursing Minutes. Um, this channel is for knowledge sharing and entertainment purposes. Always follow your physician's orders, your hospital's policy and procedures, your nurse practice acts. And we are free of any legal liability. And I just thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you hear on this channel, please subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any future video releases, and then leave some comments below. I'd love to hear from you about what you hear your surgeons are doing with appendectomies.